If you can do this, uh, I guess, minds on question in your head, then we're, we're getting somewhere. If you haven't looked at it at all yesterday, then use today as a way to refresh and remind yourself that it's not over. You gotta keep going. So here's a case. The number of cases of very applicable monkeypox in the world can be modeled by the equation n for a number of cases equals two times one plus 0 0.02 to the power of t, where time is time in days. Here's the first discovery of infection. What does the t represent? Think carefully based on what we talked about for each portion. Because in an exponent, it's in an exponential function, every piece has a special meaning to it. So, I'll give you 10 seconds. Volunteers, once, twice. Uh, that number that is multiplying to the base and the exponents of the, the power portion, the coefficient, is the correct, which stands for. It's whatever the starting value is. It means what? What is the context? The number of cases of we have of monkeypox. So initial value for the number of cases, put those two together in the very first day, right? Since day zero, I guess, we had two cases. That's what it means. That's essentially what it means. Okay. What does the 0 0.02 represent? 10 seconds. Suggestions? Yep. Pardon? Not the decay rate we're, we were talking about yesterday. Look how it's a plus right now. We're not actually going down. We are. We're growing. It's the growth rate. And because it's 0 0.02, it, it converts or it can be translated to a 2% increase from one. Okay. It's the R value. Next, it's very important for you to make, to understand where the numbers go because everything will be in a word problem form. You have to be able to plug it in. I can demonstrate it for you in class, but it doesn't matter if you can copy what I write down because you have to be able to create your own equation. So try to wake up today. Yesterday, a lot of people seem to be sleeping. Today, I, I really want you to do this because this is the bare minimum that you have to be able to do when we approach this class. All right, so we have this equation. What would the number of cases be? So in short, I'm asking, what is the number of cases, the y value, if it was not intervened for an entire month of May? So how much time am I talking about? Month of May. How many days do you have this month? Three? Yes. One. So essentially, it's N for 31 days. So 2, 1.02 to the power of 31. We're assuming again that it is unchecked. And let's also assume that if you're infected, that automatically counts as a case even if you do get healthy it's it's a case once twice i'll do the calculation i guess it's approximately 3.695 so you might be thinking do i round down or do i round up you can't be half infected. If you're partially infected, you are infected. So 
So it has nothing to do with the, the fact that this is greater than a four. Okay. You would say that there are four people that have been affected. Even if it was 3.1 persons, if 0.1 is still counts as one, you can't be 0.1 infected. Right? So if it actually gets over a three, then you know that there's three, that there's going to be four people. In any case, that's the, the element of realism, I suppose. I think that's it. I wonder if there was a question from yesterday that is particularly challenging that you might want to explore uh, before we move on. Did anyone get a chance to try either number one, sorry, number four, number 10, or number 11 from the homework? Did anyone look at this at all? Amazing. All right. Well, how about we do one more? Because if this is the first time you're looking at it since yesterday, nothing probably left, was left in your heads. Very little, I mean. Right? Um, let us take a look at, see if I can open it up. I asked people to try number four. That was essentially what I just did, but since no one ever tried it, right? It says, uh, if in this equation, tell me what the initial amount is, tell me what the growth rate is, and tell me what the number of flowing periods are. That's essentially initial amount, the growth rate is a 5%, and there's the flowing period, right? And I always want to do that as a minus one. So if you did number four, what I just did on the whiteboard will be familiar to you. Let's take a look at number 10. An ant colony triples in number every month. Currently, there are 24,000 in the nest. What is the monthly growth rate of the colony? What is the initial population? I'm going to take this information and try to write. There are currently 24,000 in the net. So I know my initial value is going to be 24,000. And as a reference, I'm going to put in VF is equal to VI, 1 plus R to the power of T. What is the monthly growth rate? Well, the question said. It triples. In other words, this entire thing has to be a, a pair for not a zero point. If I'm tripling, that means I'm literally multiplying. So VI, VI is multiplying by three, right? And then that's multiplying by a three. That's multiplying by a three. Every single time I one month passes, I'm multiplying by a three. So what does that base have to be? Using exponent ideas, and multiplying by what every single time? The question says I'm multiplying by a three. I'm tripling every single time. So if I want this base to be a three, what is my growth rate? In other words, one plus R equals a three. My R. Two. What is R? What is two as a percent? What is 2.00 as a percent? Twenty percent. So I'm increasing by two hundred percent every single month. So the question one, what's the monthly growth rate? Growth rate is 2.00 or 200%. And I'll say that one more time. The question said that I am tripling every single time, AKA I am multiplying by three every single time. 
So this, the base of that exponent has to be a three. Multiply by multiply by three. Write an equation that models the number of ants in the colony. Okay. Well, VF equals VI bracket one plus R close bracket exponent of T. There it is. In case you're wondering where the three came from, it's because of what I just talked about. Right? Bi one plus r to the power of t. That becomes twenty-four thousand. Use your equation to predict the size of a colony in three months. What does that mean? Size of the colony in three months. What do they want to know in the equation and what do they give us in the equation? Yep. Oh, uh, what? Yes, correct. Because the question already says uh, time. Yeah, it triples every month. So time is supposed to be in one. So time for three months would be a three. So VF is 24,000, three to the power of three. Okay, that will be three to the power of three times 24,000. We'll do that in the calculator for you. That's disgusting. I don't know how many ants you've seen in your lifetime, or if you do have a nest nearby, or even a infestation in your house. In my home, uh, every summer, I have to fight with ants. I buy lots of ant traps. I spray. I check the basement to see if there's anything happening. It's a constant battle, and typically I win, but at the expense of my home being nibbled at a little bit more every year. So it makes me a little scared, but I believe it. Ants are gross, and they multiply like, like, I don't know, what's the expression? They multiply faster than rabbits. Okay, like I don't know what to say. It's it's pretty bad. But anyways, with that out of the way, this is something that I need you to be able to connect very very easily. Okay, our quest will have these kinds of questions as an entry level. Let's talk about today's lesson, exponential decay. If you have that sheet, that's great. If you don't, please go and grab it. I will pull that out. Oops. Yeah. All right, so please notice similarities. What do you notice about before and now? What is similar with our previous equation and this one? What's similar? Do I have to write it out for you? What is similar? Go ahead. Yeah. 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 The only thing that's different is whether you're adding or you're subtracting from the one. Case in point, the one simply represents 100%. It keeps the number exactly the same as it is. So the R tells you, am I going up higher than one or down, lower than one? So it is your goal, everyone up here, it's your goal to figure out whether I am increasing or decreasing. So you're going to have to learn a new word, something called appreciate or 
depreciate. Now the word appreciate usually has to do with feelings, right? Like I appreciate you. When it comes to value, appreciate or depreciate means the value goes up or the value goes down. So let me give you an example here. Okay, so again, same equation, it's just a subtraction. What do I mean by that? Take a look at it. A car, keyword, depreciates by 35% every year. How much would your car be worth after four years? Hmm. Let's brainstorm as a class because I'm gonna do this as an example. Um, let's research. Dream car, anyone have an opinion? Anyone ever dreamed of a particular car and they're like, I want to drive that when they were younger? I would have known, but I didn't have one until much later in life. All right. If you had to drive, if you had to purchase a car because you're getting older and you need to get to work and subway is out of the question, what would you buy? Used? New. Money. Yes, used. Okay, um, are we going for economic or are we still going for, I would like something that will last me a long time? Or like, I, I, are you still looking for style and whatnot? Legit, I am going to go and search this online. Uh, what is it? Trade, car trade, auto trader .com or something? Let's, look. Let's, let's do some homework. What kind of car are we looking at? It's important. You're gonna to have to make this decision someday. And God forbid that you become like a sheep and just follow what everyone else does. You just gotta stand on your two feet and make an executive decision. You have to take control of your life one day. Yep. Afford. afford. Okay. Why afford? Oops. Just because. Uh, All right. Sure. Any particular model? Okay, so we're going for, we suddenly went from used car to uh, luxury used car. I see. Okay, um, let's do our zip code. What's, what's the school zip code? M for something. Trader.ca. Did I accidentally? Oh, so there it is. Okay. Make for motto and okay. Uh, possible M4 2L5. Thank you. Let's do use. I, I want I want specifically certified peon. Why not? Okay, so this person, it seems that, wait, this is not a, why are they, why are they doing this? Oh, shoot, I, the plus the code was, was stuck, but they didn't actually change uh, my specification. Okay, used or certified payroll. Know, here we go. We've got a 2017 for almost 80K. We've got a 2021, uh, that's a GT for 82. Um, should I just choose whatever? Got a lot of mileage. This is almost brand new. Okay, so let's use a used one. I don't know why this is completely brand new. It's actually sort of suspicious. Let's go with an older one. Okay, maybe they took care of it. They drove it for five years. So that means they only drove it like 5K a year, which is amazing. It's basically new. Um, 78K. Going back to our sheet. Let's pretend our dream car initial value. So it's going to be a Ford. Mustang, 2017. The initial value is going to be $78,000. Okay. 
What is the decay rate? Look at the question. as a decimal, 0 0.35. Once again, if you're not quite sure where that number comes from, take your 35% and you're going to move it two decimals to the left, like that. Right? Because per cent is literally 35 divided by 100. You are decreasing the decimal or moving the decimal places two units to the right. Calculate the average price of your car after one year, two year, and five years after purchase. Okay, so I don't know why I, I wrote four years and I wrote one, two, and five. Okay, so just four years after purchase. So we have, because it's a depreciation, it's automatically going to be a one minus R. Because it is, um, we take a look at the information that they give you. I'm looking for final value. I have the initial value. I have the rate. This is the PK rate. And I have my time to be four years. How is, why is it years? Well, it says 35% every year. So I know that time has to be in years as well. Let's do it. Putting that together, my VF is going to be 78,000, one minus 0 0.35, all to the power of four. Sorry, yeah, four. Which is the same as 78,000 0 0.65 to the power of 4. Stopping right there, I really want you to notice what happens to the base. It's not bigger than 1. That's the key difference between exponential growth and exponential decay. That's a, it's a new sheet. It has a different formula. Super important. Let's finish the song. So after four years, it would be approximately Is that necessarily true? Mm, I think Mustangs would still be coveted. A lot of people would still want a Mustang. So in this particular case, that's probably not true, but there are certain cars where the value just plummets. And if uh, not an auto trader, because you're selling it yourself, but if you sold it back to the dealership, they won't give you much money. Case in point, um, my first car, um, with the help of my dad, uh, it was with just cash, it was approximately about $35,000. Right? So let's just pretend, just, this is Mr. King, you don't have to write this, $35,000. And I drove it essentially until I got married and had to trade in. So it was a good five, six years. I drove that for about a good five, six years, and my trade-in, they only gave me like $3,000 for it after six years. So over six years, I lost basically 90% of its value. But it's not like I lost a little bit every single time. As soon as I drove it out of the dealership, Let's say it's worth $35,000. As soon as I drive it out, after a year, it will be worth very little. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Things like that. So it's exponential, which is pretty cool, right? We can use math to model this. Any questions about depreciation? 
Because the only thing I have left for you today is to look at example questions to help you in preparation for a quest. As a uh, science major, my background is in the health sciences, uh, exponential decay particularly uh, to me is very fun because there were so many situations where the human body uses exponential decay. So my study was in toxicology. What does that mean? Toxins. What is poisonous to the human body? Anything essentially is poisonous to the human body. Anything. Even water could be poisonous to the human body if you have too much of it. And so let's talk. When you have, welcome, for example, caffeine. Caffeine is still organic. You can still eat it. Um, same with essentially just anything, even Tylenol, right? Like it, it's still considered um, something that your body can handle. But even food, it's working to break down in your body. So let's say caffeine is put in your body. Are you going to be stimulated for the rest of your life? No, your body will start to break it apart. And uh, I forget if I did my research for this, but I do believe that caffeine, no, no, I did, I did uh, research for the second half. So let's pretend your body will break down 50% of the coffee in your body every hour. What is the decay rate? Don't be fooled. Just because I don't use the word depreciate doesn't mean you can just pretend it's not a decay. Breaking down, I think you can put the English word together. It means decay. Beat down, break down, sorry. The R value in this case is 15%. Every hour. What's with my grammar today? Models by the equation. Oh, they don't give you the equation. Let me give you the equation. All right. Um, let's pretend uh, my R value, of course, is 0 0.15. Uh, my initial value. Let's just pretend we have like 100%, right? If you drink a cup of coffee, that's the entire amount in your body, that's your 100%. Does that make sense, right? It's 100. So if, and then I don't know what my final value is, but I do know that because it's every hour, time is with respect, or sorry, this function is going to be in respect to time. So my overall equation is going to be, yeah, I have 100%, I have a total, 1 minus 0 0.15 to the power. That is the same as. Okay. What percent or what amount of caffeine would be left in your body? It's not rocket science, the time is. Pardon me? For one day, that's a clue that our time is going to be 24. So the final percent or, the, or whatever amount of percent we have left in your body is going to follow this equation. It's forgiven. Every single time it's going to be taking this formula and figuring out what numbers go where. So your homework is going to always be along these lines. So how much is left? What is my BF? Sounded already? Okay. Wait for a couple people. I really want you guys to give it a try. Part of the practice is also being super quick with the calculator.
Pues ya. So 2.02. Remember, add from 100%, that was my initial value. I have 2% left. Right? At that point, you could still say, oh, there's coffee left in your body. What? Um, two things. Number one, your body probably can't feel coffee if there's only 2% left. So you still feel tired. You won't be stimulated. And number two, um, sooner or later, it will actually remove it completely. Your body is able to do that. B is a very, or oh, this should be C. There's a lot of errors in this one. Everyone, this is a good one. Um, I'm probably not going to give you something like this on a quiz or a test, but there are situations where they ask you for something else. Consider this. I know my initial value is 100. I know my decay rate is 15%. Look, how long which means what is time? Must you wait for your body to only have 5% left? Do they actually give you five this time? Plugging it into this equation. Now this is again, an exercise to figure out what numbers go where. If I were to give you something like this on a, on a assignment or something, this would be a kind of a cheap question. Why? Well, you'll have to use a little bit of your thinking to pinpoint a number. Now, let me simplify this. I'm going to divide both sides by 100 so that I have a simplified power. 0 0.85 to the power of what would give me 0 0.05? Hmm. Well, I do know it's got to be smaller than 24. Give me a number that's not 24 hours. Let's give it a shot. Yep. 22? Let's try it. 0 0.85 to the power of 22. Mm, 0 0.028. I need a better guess. How many hours? Sorry. No, smaller. I need to get to 0 0.05, right? So we got to 0 0.02, so 2.202, .2, right? Any more? Not 20. Let's try that. 25 to the power of 20, mm -mm, 0 0.038. It's closer, but not enough. How about 18? Uh, 0 0.054. So how about I go bigger this time? Let's try right in between. 0.85 to the power of 19. Mm. 0 0.046. So it's very similar, somewhere between there. So maybe about 19 and a half hours. So therefore, about, sorry, not 19 and a half, 18 and a half. Oh, what's happening? What's happening? About 18 and a half hours. So this, um, you might imagine, do you think 
mathematicians are satisfied with the guess and check method. When you get to grade 12, you will learn a method that allows you to get the exponent all alone. There is a mathematical function that helps you do that. Um, we're not going to learn that in the grade 11 level. So if you are interested, well, you're going to have to wait until next year. But for now, you'll have to be okay with that, with a guess and check, if you ever need to find your T value. Let me put a little star here and mention, put a little note here saying, guess, check, only for solving for ex the exponent. That's the only time you will actually need it. All the other times, guess and check will be very challenging. In fact, it'll just be annoying there are more more uh, accurate ways to do it. Any questions before we get to our final equation? That's good. I hope that it's still very straightforward. You just have to plug in numbers into your formula and just practice for your quest from there. The next equation I'm giving you might look a little bit different it's essentially the exact same thing, except for one aspect. What looks different here than before? Should be obvious because it looks scary. Yep. Correct. Anytime the exponent is a fraction, it is because the denominator represents a slight change in how often you calculate. For example, I want 0.5. Remember, if it's 100 times 0 0.5 to the power of 1, that's the same as just 0. Uh, 100 times 0. 0.5. If I have 0. 0.5 to the power of 2, that is 100 times 0. 0.5 times 0. 0.5. The fraction allows me to multiply by the base, not one, two, three, four, but when the time reaches a certain period. For example, how much does a time, what does a time have to be if I want the exponent to be one? Take a look at this fraction. The fraction is t over five. What does the t have to be if I want the exponent to be a one. What does the T have to be if I want this entire fraction to be a one? Yes. So look, after research, coffee decays by 50% every five hours. So I want this to multiply once every five hours. The fraction indicates what we call a, a multiplying period or a compounding period. We give that word a special word called half-life because that is how long it takes for something to break down to half, half-life, the amount of time or the amount of life it has before it breaks down into half. That sort of makes sense, right? Um, if you were a video gamer, that word half-life might ring a bell. Okay, there was a video game called Half-Life, and the premise was there's a radioactive, like crazy thing that turns you into an alien mutant, and there's a certain amount of time before it decays, kind of thing. But it, it sort of signifies radioactivity and mutation and cancer or alienist things, whatever, whatever, okay? So don't be too fooled, but you do need to, you do need to become very familiar with that number. When you are with, when someone tells you that there is a half-life, you have to know that it goes into the exponent and it's gonna divide whatever time. I'll put a little star there. You have been warned. 
Anytime there is a question on half-life, come to this example and apply it, okay? Here's my equation. It decays by 50%. So the base, remember it's one minus R. And in this case, it decays by 50%. So what is one minus 0 0.5? Well, it's going to be positive 0 0.5. That's why we have 0 0.5 there. Here is my time. Here is my half-life of five hours. How much coffee remains in your system after eight hours? How much caffeine will be there? If it's 100 times 0 0.5 to the power of eight hours, but I am only calculating the 0 0.5, the half every five hours. Ask yourself once again, what does this represent? What does this represent? What does that represent? What does this represent? They all have a special meaning. I'd like you to be able to connect it. With that said, if you want to know how to work this in the calculator, I highly recommend you do either. I would do this. If you want to do it all in one go, you have to be comfortable with all your buttons in the calculator. Type in one. Zero, zero, multiplication sign, opener bracket, zero, period, five, close bracket, exponent. And because you need eight over five together, I want you to open another bracket. Eight, divide, five, close bracket. If you are okay with using the answer button on your calculator, divide eight with five, eight divided by five, you should get 1.6. 0 0.5 is to the power of that answer, 1.6. And then you multiply it by 100. How much caffeine is in your body after eight hours? 32.98769. So therefore, approximately about 33% is left after eight hours. Yes. Next to the... next to the C, this one? Oh, it is a function notation. It means time is eight. I plugged in eight as T, yeah. So this time being eight means that's going to be time of eight. And that's it. Yesterday, we did this equation where exponents are growing the situation. Today, we're looking at it uh, when exponents are decaying or decreasing the situation. The difference, yesterday, we started from a certain value and we're going up, 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 up. Today, we are going down, 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 and essentially trying to get to the zero or whatever that is, whatever the answer is. Questions? All right, then a final tip, because tomorrow is going to be a bunch of review where we practice, practice, practice. A final tip for this, uh, for this quest. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let me write it down so that you can see it for later. Oh, some people are still copying. Where were you? Do I need to rewrite it? Where were you? Okay, let me get to it after. Let me let me let me uh, write down this tip for a second. Okay. For the quest, remember it's going to be Tuesday, not Monday. What you will want to know how to do is number one: simple 
exponential growth. Okay. Identify key information, then create equation. And of course, you need to use the equation after. Okay. Simple exponential decay. Once again, identify key info and create equation. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do it today, but I'd like you to try for homework. I'm going to assign it. You have to be able to look at a graph and analyze it. Okay. Um, what else? Thinking questions? Such as, um, word problems asked for anything other than okay. What if I give you an equation or I ask you to create an equation and I reverse it? I'm like, here's the answer. What was the question? There's a lot of questions like that through our homework and you'll see more of it in our review tomorrow. Um, let's see, is there anything else that we should be worried about? Probably not. Stay tuned, tomorrow I am going to give you one of these. It's going to look something like this and there'll be a variety of questions where for growth and decay, you'll be asked to find VF, maybe I give you VF and you have to find VI, Maybe I give you both and you have to find R. Maybe I give you all three and you have to find time. Just being able to look at a question and pull the information out, plug it into an equation and then put it into a calculator. That's it. You know, in a certain way, you can say it's another homework check, but you have to be very, very comfortable when it comes to equations. And of course, there's half life. Don't, don't underestimate half life. Questions. Question. Have a homework? I recommend you start with start with number one and number two. I think it's a great place to be because it does get you to uh, investigate the graph, just like I said before, and uh, it does talk about half life and number six as well. So I'd like you to try that. Number one, number two, and number six. You still have about 20 minutes if you want to try it. Just to make sure you don't forget and leave it until tomorrow. And that's it.